Anyway, so what I want to know is if I'm an honorary member of the psychedelic experience. Oh, man. Oh, oh. There's very little honor involved. <laughs> I've worked so hard for this. <laughs> we are, we are we very not. glad to have you. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's get cracking. Yes. So uh, who wants to explain? Whose idea was this? Well, it was mine, and I, and I watched your video. I was actually going to text you guys last night at, like, 10 our time and i was like i don't know man he's not working as hard as he used to you know just because i mean like he's not at the shop until like three in the morning like he was a couple months ago i never sleep it doesn't matter anytime well okay i both m both mellow yellow and i love sleeping like love it so anyway um but i was watching your video and you were making some comments about uh about reissues and i was like that's that's a really good thing for new collectors to know about um, cause everybody kind of has to, I, I think these conversations are going to be like largely about like our experiences, uh, obviously showing the records off too, but like, how do you decide, how does anybody decide? Like, is that something I'm going to go for a reissue of, or am I like, is that a holdout where I, I won't even listen to a note of it until I own the pristine first pressing, you know? So, I mean, just kind of like. I think that's a thing. I know for me, when I got into collecting, like, seriously, I looked back at the records I had bought over probably, like, the pe the previous decade. I was like, like, oh, man, I didn't realize, like, a bunch of these were reissues. Like, here I am thinking, like, oh, yeah, I've got that record. And you're like, I mean, it's good to have the music, but there's some stuff you're like, my Dylans, I don't want that. I don't want that orange Columbia label. no. I want two I or six I in your case, Dylan. My gosh, yeah, I hate you for that one, man. There, uh, this actually, this whole thing, this one is going to be another one of like, and I hate Dylan because of this. But there's a bunch of stuff to consider when you go to reissues, and so I was like, people need to hear that discussion, and it needs to be us talking about it. Right, right. So the first record that came to mind when you said that was. Fraction Moon Bloody. You guys ever heard this record? Oh, I only crazy. know about it. I've never heard it. You have got to listen to this. The originals are thirty five hundred bucks, probably. Yeah. So I and there's only two hundred of them. I, I there, there's no way I'm ever gonna own this. There's just no way. And if I did have it, I would sell it and <laughs> like just save the money because there's no way I would pay that much for a record at this stage of the sickness. But this is a um this is. A reissue, really good one. It's on Mexican Summer, um, and it's got an extra 10-inch with it with some extra tracks and stuff. It's got a gatefold sleeve. It's really, really well done. So I think that when you're going to – you have to consider – I'm not going to open it up. This is, like, crazy. Um, but when you go to consider if you're going to go reissue or not, you know, some reissues are better sounding than the originals. Some are – some of the originals are just absolutely like that is impossible this is the best copy i'm ever going to find because these are like 40 bucks when you get them sure, and sure. um so i mean you gotta look at sound quality what's going to sound good but also it depends on what kind of collector you are some people they collect records like baseball cards they don't listen to them that much they just want rare stuff and they have to have first pressings for me if it's between not having it at all or having a reissue i'm gonna have a reissue so and a lot of times i'll buy a reissue um <laughs> Like in this case right here, I'll just show you. I don't know if you know this record. This is Jerusalem. I talk about this all the yeah. time. Yeah, you got a heck of a deal on that. That yeah. So I had to reissue this forever. Yeah. You can get the reissues for like twenty five, thirty bucks. And I was happy with the reissue. I knew I would never find original. They're worth like five hundred bucks. There's no way. And uh, somebody threw this up on eBay for ten bucks. Buy it now. And I, I thought it was a reissue, but it looked like a really nice one, so I bought it. And I got it in the mail, and I'm looking it over. I'm like, holy crap, this is a first press. It's a first German press for 10 bucks, You know, so that was extremely lucky. But a lot of times I'll buy a reissue if, if I think it's going to be a while. And then if I get a new uh, – if I, if I find a first pressing, I can either give that one away or sell it or trade it towards, you know, whatever. Usually in my mind, I think, okay, if I'm going to get this record for 100 bucks, I got a reissue I can sell for 15. So I'm really getting the record for 85 bucks, you know, something like that. So now, now I will, I will totally admit to having that mentality. 
I have no you. stories whatsoever where I got like some, like I've had good scores, but I've never had the like, I paid three bucks for this record and it's worth 500. I, that's never happened to me ever. Um, Melly Yellow, I went second last week, so do you want to go? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you did have a good 45 fine uh, last summer that you paid, you got it cheap. I did, yeah. Actually, that's, I, I, but it's, it's, if I, if that does happen to me, I'll say this. It's not usually the stuff, it's not like the, the psych LP that I'm looking right. to keep. It's more like a, and that's nice too. It's nice when you find something, you're like, I have no interest in keeping this. That makes it easy. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat as like, I'm not averse to reissues at all, you know, on stuff that's crazy rare. Sometimes you just got to pop on the reissue. And I, I made a joke in a text thread to you guys earlier. Like, I don't even think I have five reissues. I that do. better I have... be included in the, in, in this video's post. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I have like, I have like 18 reissues. I just don't tend to buy them because if I'm going to spend 20 or 25 on something. I'm probably going to buy an earlier pressing of something else unrelated. I do have a smattering of reissues, um, but there's some stuff that's like, you know, it's not crazy expensive. You might find an original someday that's in a price range you can afford, but you might want to spend the 15 to 20 bucks on a reissue until you do find the original. Because, I mean, it's like, who's going to find, like, Maggot Brain at a record show for, like, $4? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but I, I found one at a record show for $4, and this is that copy. Um you know, so you do get lucky sometimes, but this record, generally like 50-ish on the low end, it can go upwards of 100-ish for a really nice copy now, it's kind of gone up in value, but, uh, you know, you might get lucky on something in that price range, you know, if it's like 75 bucks median, you might get lucky and find something like in the 30-ish dollar range, so then you have to weigh the option, like, do I spend the 20 or 25 on a reissue, do I hold out and hope I get lucky and find a... Uh, you know, a, a more affordable original. And sometimes you do get lucky and uh, and have those finds. So that's yeah. one of them. I found my maggot brain at a yard sale. Nice. Um, actually, I found like I've had I found like five or six by now. But anyway. <laughs> the one that's mine that's like perfect, as clean as a yard sale find. So. Yep. Hate you guys. Uh, all right. Uh, I don't want to do this. Okay. So Dylan, one of the things you talked about in that video that you posted last night was like what lists you use and this is one that i'm just i'm 500 greatest albums of all time but richard morton jack's psychedelia 101 it's it's phenomenal the vast majority of records in this probably like 80 of the 101 you can get for less than 75 dollars the others though there are a few that are just like insane so if you have a list that you're going for one of the way, one of the ways I do it is I chart it out by like look on Discogs, what's the average price? Where is it that I'm like, where's the cutoff line? Like, nope, I just can't go there, you know. Um, so there's some stuff in this that I have reissues of. Some of them are early reissues, and some are like, no, that just ain't gonna happen, man. Gandalf showed last week. In here, happy to have my fifteen dollar reissue. But uh again kind of kind of responding to your your things from last week so this is the 1978 reissue of 13th floor elevator psychedelic sounds of these are really good reissues uh a bunch of the stuff on that international artist label got done on it's called da -da 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 -da. our record What's that? Radar. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's upside down here, so I was looking for it. That red label one, if you can find those, those are pretty well done. So I recommend those. They also, this is 78, so I know it's a moot point anyway, but they don't have a barcode on the back. That's a thing I'm always looking for with reissues. So if you're out there and you're just buying basic stuff and you're like, I want Bruce Springsteen Born to Run, hold out for one that doesn't have a barcode on the back because it sold 6 million copies in the 70s, you know? You you don't need to get, like, the 85 crappy reissue that Columbia did. Just hold out for a 76 or 77. Doesn't need a bar, no barcode. You're going to be in good shape with that one. But, yeah, 13th Floor Elevators, I have both their first two albums on that, that 78 Radar reissue. I also have the Radar reissue of Red Crayola, um, 
They're really good 70s reissues. Um, I, so I like those. Well, I mean, you're never going to find a, you know, original <laughs> mono, you know. That's something that you're not ever going to really run across. I know. What a jerk. I mean, I just had, I knew you were going to show it, so I had to bring yeah. it. Back. Yeah. Here's the thing. Both Mellow Yellow and I have seen an original mono in the wild before. Yeah. There was one at a record show in St. Louis. How much uh, was it? 50 or 300, somewhere in that range. He wanted, really nice. yeah, he wanted 400, and I think whoever yeah. ended up picking it up paid 300 for it. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I got this one for 100 bucks. Nice. Oh, all day long. I yeah. had to do it. I had a friend that was, like, thinning out some uh, some psych stuff, and he's like, this is a rare one. I got to get at least 100 bucks for it. I'm like, I'm there, daddy-o. Oh, I, <laughs> I'd drop $100 on that any day. Those 78 reissues from Radar, they go somewhere between the, depending on condition, 40 and 60. I got a steal on mine. I paid 28 bucks for it shipped. So. All right. Uh, the next one I was going to show, I, I picked a bunch of stuff <laughs> that's like impossible to find originals of. Um, this is Bent Win, Sussex. You know, 1969, amazing psych. This is a phenomenal record. And this is one that I knew. It was one of those things where I was either I didn't have it at all or I had a reissue of it. Um, this is a really good Canadian reissue. I think it's like an early 90s Canadian reissue of it. Uh, but it's an absolutely phenomenal album. And like I said, these go for $2,500, $3,000, something like that. It's they're, you know, it's one of those that, and like you said, I like, I like what you said about you got to know where your line is, you know, yeah. where, where you're going to, what's your limit? Like, there's no way, no matter what, I'm going to spend more than this amount on a record. It can be relative. Like, I, I don't know. For me, my line used to be $3 when I was young and collecting. Like, I, I wouldn't buy it, pay over $3. And I never did up until my, like, 20s, you know. And uh, I had every like uh, everything I needed to have at the time. But <clears throat> for stuff like this, I mean, my line keeps going up. And I'll do all sorts of crazy things for records that I want. So, <laughs> Mel Yellow has a fairly hard line that every single time I get him to break it, I feel like it's a personal victory. But he knows a dude who has a crazy, ridiculous hard line of $1. Yep. He's never <laughs> paid more than a dollar for a record. Yeah. And he's unbelievable. Like, he's retired now, has done it his whole life. And he has an insane collection, too. But, you know. If you can do it, you can do it, I guess. You know, it's good for him. But uh, yeah, I used to I used to be a hard line. Do what? What's your line? My line now is like 60. If I can stay under 60, I'm happy. I have broken that a couple times. I think, honestly, like two or three times. Um, and usually from, from him giving me some pressure, you know. What's, what's your line, Sam? Uh, my wife is in the next room, so it's <laughs> very low. So about seven months. <laughs> <laughs> well, she heard me say, I'm pretty sure she heard me say like 30 bucks on something. So, hi, sweetheart. It's a joke, honey. It's not at your expense. You're a good person. She would allow me to, she would say, don't be unreasonable. Yeah. And I think that's that's a good, good uh, spousal barometer. Blink twice if you need help. No, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm getting the death stare right now, but... She loves me. She's smiling. No, I just, we're talking about what we've paid for records. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm in trouble now, guys. All right, I'll, I'll bail you out here. I'll, I'll go. Okay, you can go downstairs and go to the bathroom. My daughter's in the room. Uh, Bye, Morgan. So, wish her luck. Uh, no, so continuing in the thread of, like, three issues of stuff that... Uh, or maybe cult classics. And again, the, the originals aren't insanely, insanely expensive. You know, they're not in the, the Holy Grail thousand dollar range, but they're, you know, originals around 150 to 250 in that range. You can find the reissues all day long for 15 to 20. You know, like crazy lucky at a record show and find an original promo for 20 bucks. You know, I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but it can happen. You know, uh, for example, like a record like Big Star Radio City. You know, hey, it's the craziest thing I've ever heard, Mom. So sometimes, sometimes you get lucky and, and have those finds, but otherwise, like you'll do good to get a reissue. I do have a reissue of Big Star's number one record. 
that I paid like 10 bucks for used. It's a good reissue. Um, I have heard a reissue of Radio City as well, and they're great. So you can't go wrong with there. And, uh, you know, you might get lucky. You might not. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So um, this video is turning from uh, okay reissues to get to bragging about records <laughs> you've gotten for sure. Yeah. Time. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I started small, guys. Uh, started small. Spoiler alert, all of my records are not reissues. <laughs> so, <laughs> Wait, yeah. all the ones you're going to show today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, because, yeah, you're a jerk. All right, yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. Okay. I am going to stick with the theme, sort of. <laughs> um, in continuing with the, like, stuff that it is totally unreasonably out of my price range, I'm going to actually show three in quick succession here. Uh, UK Kaleidoscope. Um, sure, yeah. I've seen one go for as low as $600. I ain't going to do that. Uh, I think this was a 2016 or 2017 reissue in the UK on orange vinyl and a very, very well done gatefold in a really, really sturdy cover. Um, these reissues are now going for like 100 bucks. I cashed in. I think I got one for just under 50. Uh, so yeah, I mean that was a that was a no brainer to me. I was like, yeah, you, yeah. Condition is so much in collecting, but when you think about like a Black Sabbath record, well, condition is the difference between I don't know twelve dollars and fifteen dollars sometimes in in listenable ranges. Whereas something like this, you're like unlistenable. This is a $300 record. Pristine, it's a $1,200 record. Like, when it gets that rare, it's just crazy. Uh, same with something like this. Uh, Monks, Black Monk Time. Again, you're just, you're not going, yeah, right? It's a reissue, though, right? Yeah. $600 minimum yeah. for a, uh, you know, a 66 German press or whatever. So, you're like, yeah, I'm, this is, I'm totally comfortable with this. And this reissue, 20 bucks. It's $20 yeah. reissue for a double album. Awesome garage stuff. So Black Monk Time, totally worth your time. And then I think I paid like 18 for this shipped. I don't love this. This is actually more poppy than I can really tolerate. Yep. But uh, it's a it's a Parlophone pressing of a Parlophone record. It does have the barcode on the back. But it's got the flip back and everything like that. It's it's UK. It's meant to be a faithful recreation, uh, but obviously using brand new materials and stuff like that. You're just not going to find Rainbow Folly. Like, this ain't going to be sitting around in the garage sale in Illinois. But it could. You never know. You never. What, the Kaleidoscope, What I'll, uh, that brings me to a good point. So my pressing of Kaleidoscope is on a label called Sunbeam Records. I've got yes. a few years. That is the best psych reissue label. It's like audiophile grade, super high quality jackets and stuff. That well, you can get those for like forty bucks. They sound phenomenal. My copy sounds amazing. So that I've got my, yeah, I got a few sunbeams. They're good. Yeah, that's that's the next ones I'm gonna go into is my sunbeams. So we'll get there. Okay. So whose turn is it? Mine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. This one is another one i went all these are north of fifteen hundred dollars that i've got that i'm not gonna pay that for this one's uh ca quintet trip through hell this is a sunday's on gold vinyl um this is a phenomenal record on st in stereo you just sit back and buckle up and take the ride it's you buy the ticket pack your suitcase it's 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 it's, it's a trip but this is the most psychedelic, deep psych. It's crazy. It's awesome. But there's no way. Okay. Yeah, there's there's somebody offered me one for two grand uh, a few weeks ago, and I'm like, eh, that's uh, way above my line, Daddy O. Um, but someone bought it. He said for like, I think he said twenty two hundred. I don't remember, but he owned a record store. But yeah, these there's just no way, and uh, it's one that you've absolutely got to have. Sunday <clears throat> is a pretty good label. Um, so, well, there it is. Sundays puts out some really good stuff that wouldn't be out if it weren't for them. So, and it's pretty decent quality stuff. So, that's that was my pick. Um, and then, 
that's in here, Dylan. And um, yeah, it's it would it would easily be one of like the top three to five records price wise for originals. I do have a first reissue of that from the eighties, um, which those aren't even easy to come by now. It's on that uh, Psycho label. Yeah. Yes, yeah. The I, label is terrible. It's yeah. a terrible label. Yeah. So that psychedelia book, how um, how available and expensive is that book? This, oh. when it first came out, I think it, uh, Amazon had them for uh, eighteen or nineteen bucks, and the jacket price on it is it doesn't have a jacket price. But the, you can easily get one, I think, still for less than 25 bucks. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's really, really well done. Color photography throughout. Good information about the band and all its members. Lots of cool, cool stuff in there. So, yeah, this is definitely worth it as a collector book. I don't have that. I need to get it. I've got the Endless Trip, so. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have that. But anyways, go ahead, Matt. All Seriously. right. So this next one I've got. Three issues are plentiful. It's a record that uh, everybody needs to have. Even original copies you can find for like the $30 range. Unless you want an uncensored copy, then you do need to go with the reissue. Otherwise, you're going to pay like 75 to 100 bucks again. Unless you get like crazy lucky and find one at a thrift store for like 25 cents. You know, the MC5 uh, kick out the jams. Now, this is not, you know, a pristine copy that I found for 25 cents. But it is the uncensored copy. And um, I I have a censored copy as well that uh, I think I paid like 15 bucks for. So, uh, you know, sometimes the rarities are just as, as small as one word being bleeped out. Um, and that makes the value go from like a $30 record to a $75 record or, again, a, a $15 to $20 reissue. And, uh, you know, they're out there, but you, sometimes you got you to gotta decide, do you want to pay up? Do you want to wait to find it? Do you want the reissue? <laughs> is that the fisher price vacuum cleaner <laughs> yeah mine was a gift so i got it for free suck it anyways oh just kidding just kidding we're not doing that here um, i got my first copy as vclt yeah. but i had to pay up for an uncensored yeah yeah, it's the, my uncensored. I didn't even realize I didn't, I'd never heard it before. And the guy that gave it to me is like, "You got to hear this record. You can just have it." It was uh, uncensored. Nice. Pretty lucky there. So, yeah. let's see it, Sam. What you got? Okay, so here are two of the Sunbeam ones. I know you have an original of this. I hate you so much that you have it, but Dragonfly. Fifteen bucks. I unbelievable, man. <laughs> unbelievable. Huge shout out. I, I dogged on my wife a little bit there. She picked this up for me on Record Store Day last year because there were only 600 copies of this reissue put out by Sunbeam. None of the record stores that I went to in the morning had them. She was in her hometown. I called her up. I was like, hey, I called the record store there. They have one copy of this. Will you go pick it up for me? So this reissue on Sunbeam, 25 bucks. Originals go between 250 and I've seen up to like six and seven hundred. Um, but this one, Richard Morton Jack, is the guy who does Sunbeam Records. So he writes the all the stuff in here. So the essay in this is essentially the essay from the book, but it comes with a nice little uh, a couple things actually. Uh, some cool inserts, including a seven inch of Legend which is actually what this band was, the, their, their first album. They were called Legend, and I think the album was called Legend 2 before they became Dragonfly. So this is like, a, a, uh, yeah, this is just a two-sided, but a little 7-inch from Legend, so some, some proto-Dragonfly that you get there, and then uh, awesome gatefold kind of, you know, cool little information in there, as well as like an eight-page booklet. And then the other one also would be like regularly see them asked between I think twelve and fifteen hundred euro, but Sunbeam reissue of the Open Mind is killer. Also has a seven inch in it. Yep, you gotta have it, dude. It's so good. It is mind blowingly good. Yep. Oh, I got the one 
the UK one that doesn't have the barcode. Oh wow, that's funny. Yeah, I didn't. I don't even know where I got this, but I threw it in the box for today. So it's a must-have, dude. It's so good. It's it's trippy and floaty and crunchy. It's got it all, man. It's got it all. So quick story about that. I don't want to go off on a bunch of tangents, but I was in, uh, yeah. I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And there was this guy that had this warehouse and he had like all these phone parts. Like he re- repaired phones and put phones in office buildings. And in the very back corner, he had a ton of records. And he's like, just dig through them. I'll give you a price. And I went and I looked through them and I was flipping through and I found a first press of open mind. And I was like, I, I like, literally, you know how like when you find something, your heart starts racing and your palms start sweating. You're like, Oh, and I found it. And, um, and I, I brought it to him. I was like, how much you, how much you want for this? And he's like, uh, and he kind of looks at me, and I was like, you know, like, I mean, it's pretty rare. And he's like, yeah, I got to get a thousand dollars for that. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! Just sitting there, and the, oh, dude, you, you, you know, you know, you have to play that. You have to play that way differently. You bring that up in a stack of at least ten records, <laughs> and you say, <laughs> to be honest, what can I give you? Can I give you sixty bucks for this stack? Well, I hadn't like to be honest. That's that is what I did. But, I, but he, to be honest, I was like, can can we do something? And he pulls that one out, you know. But he he knew what he had. He did record shows and stuff. I didn't know that, but like he knew exactly what he had. He gave me some deals on some stuff, but that one it just wasn't happening. But so good, so good. So I'll blaze through a couple of these. Um, this is one, this might be a little bit more prog than you guys like, but this is on, uh, this is Caterpillar 2 Changes. It's their second one. Uh, this is on A Karma. Uh, a Karma is a pretty good label. It's it's actually, it's kind of hit or miss. For the most part, I've had really good luck with A Karma. I've never had anything. I've been like, oh, this sucks. I've had other people, had, I've heard some people have some complaints, but um, it has a good recreation of the Vertigo sleeve. Um and it's thick. This is at least 180 gram vinyl. You know, the, these originals are, I think, two grand or more. You know, impossible to find. I'm not. I'm never gonna find one and keep one. But uh, that's a great one. And then uh, this is another one that this one's probably 1,500 bucks. The Human Beasts. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, yeah. but this is a good reissue. Uh, I don't even know what label. If this is a 2,000 reissue. Uh, it's on Wahana, and I can't remember the original might be on that label as well. It's it's one of those that they try to recreate, uh, but this is a really good sounding. Uh, I think it's like 200 gram, but that's another one, 1,500 bucks. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get a first press of that. There's just no way. And then this uh, this one's uh, uh Linda Perax Parallelograms. This is very good. Uh, Joni Mitchell meets Grace Slick. Yeah, you know, these are 600 700 bucks uh, and this one's a 15 20 dollar reissue but they have some really good reissues of this i know there's like a double lp with extra stuff on it but this is a really great album um, another reissue i've been really wanting to get is the donnie and joe emerson um, you know the light in the attic has a lot of really great reissues and stuff like that so anyways those are the ones that i picked and um, what about you matt you got something Right, my next one uh, is a heavy sight classic. I, I know both of you guys have originals of this one. Um, you know, it's just like in the $250, $300 range. If you find a, a really nice copy, um, it's just, it's like a fuzzed up, just hard jamming, heavy in your face psych. Um, reissues you can get, again, for like the $20 to $25 range, unless you get like crazy lucky and find one at like a thrift store for 25 cents. I mean, you know, it could happen maybe someday for somebody. Uh, this is Morgan, self-titled original on Gate. You know, the Gate pulled on ABC Probe. Uh, <laughs> no, I know you guys both have this. It's just, it's incredible. This one for me was like kind of opened my mind to the world of like deep, heavy, trippy psych, and and to know that there's so much psych out there that you just don't know about until you find it. Like, this was a blind buy. I didn't know what this was when I bought it at the thrift store. And I got it home and put it on while I was, uh, like, logging stuff onto Discogs. And I was like, what is this? And just 
I went down the rabbit hole from there, you know. I was already collecting psych at that point, but this was like, oh, there's there's a surface far deeper than what I've already started to unearth here. And, uh, you know, you get the excavator out at that point to really dig deep in and find the heavy material. So it's a great album. It's essential if you're into psych, especially if you're into the heavier side of things. Uh, again, originals is going to be like 250 to 300. So if you can get a reissue, um, I want to say Sundays has a reissue. That's probably wrong. Don't put me on that. But you can get a good reissue for 20 bucks easily. Yeah, yeah that's what I had. I had the French reissue, yeah. and it was great. And then I found a first pressing, and I kick it to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's one I'm very happy to have an original, and it has the poster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about stuff that you buy a reissue of where you already have an original, but you're just like, yeah, I'm going to buy a reissue because it's cool and it's out there. I'm a Pink Floyd sucker. So this reissue that Record Store Day did two years ago of Piper, I have a first U.S. of Piper, um, but I wanted this one just because I love that album. It is the... Uh, the Psychedelic Experience Madness Champion of the greatest psychedelic album of all time. And then last year they did this one. So I was super disappointed to see there was no cool Pink Floyd reissue LP this year for the Record Store Day list. There was a couple, I think there was like a like a 7-inch, and uh, I think uh, there was a Nick Mason Saucer Full of Secrets thing. But yeah, I have an original... Or I think I have a second U.S. of this and a first U.S. of this. I still, I love Pink Floyd. I, I'm a sucker for it. So, yeah. What do you do? Yeah. Um, so have y'all showed everything you're going to show? No, I can go for days. One more. You got one more? Okay. I'm going to go one more then. I'm going to go three more real quick. Um, this is Truth and Janie. Uh, no Rest for the Wicked. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this. It's really, really good. If you like uh, smoking hot electric guitar, Jimi Hendrix type of thing. This is what you want to see. Um, these I didn't know this, but this actually this is a Rockadrome pressing. Um, I'm sorry, it's Rock Lion. Rockadrome is a website you can get stuff like this on. But anyways, these are these are going for like sixty bucks now, but I think I got it for like twenty, and I got it new. That's a really good one. They have a, a another one that's a double LP, and it's live. Um, that the website I mentioned a second ago on accident, Rockadrome, you can get it on that website. It's really good. Um, this is another one. Felt. Yeah. It's, it's 400, 500 bucks, something like that, I think. Uh, but it's a really good psych prog album. And someone from the VC gave me this because it's a little warped. Um, digital gramophone. Shout out. He gave it to me because, um, it was a little warped. So, but anyways, yeah. So that's another one that I'd love to have a first pressing of, but it's probably not that. Go, Matt. Uh, Fun fact, I know a guy that found an original of that Felt album uh, like back in November at an estate sale for like five bucks. Just wow. unbelievable. Um, so they are out there. You got to look for them, though. Uh, and then sometimes like there are records, again, that aren't like crazy expensive. You get in that 250 to $300 range, but you never see originals. Like just in the wild, you know, when you're out digging, you don't see them at record shows. You don't see them from high-end dealers. They're just they're obscure and hard to find. Um, and so you'll be at a record store flipping through a bin and you'll get to the section where the artist is and you're like, oh, this whole stack here is going to be reissues because nobody ever has that record. And so you kind of flip past them real quick. And then sometimes like one catches your eye and you're like, well, that one looked used. I'll uh, go back to it. Maybe it's a cheap reissue uh, and there will be a price tag of $19.99 on it. You're like, oh, well, that's clearly the, clearly the reissue. And you pull it out and you find out that it's not a reissue, that it is an original of Skip Spence's or uh, with a note attached to it that just says rare but worn priced accordingly and then you find out the cover is near mint and the record is like a strong bg and it plays amazingly um you know you, you do get lucky sometimes you do get lucky sometimes but otherwise you know you, you can't go wrong with the sunday's reissue of skip spence still and i crack each other up here just like mirroring each other's movements i like, <laughs> can't believe that yeah. uh, I, and i and sometimes but I yeah, yeah. More than that. Right. Uh, and sometimes, like, at that record store on that particular day, you bought some stuff in for trade, so you end up only paying, like, $7 cash for this uh, and trading off some crap you didn't want anymore. Um, you know, you know, it, it can happen. I don't yeah. I want to say who it can happen to, but it can happen. This is amazing. This is, like, downer, 
folks like a book of Moses is fantastic. Um, Gray Afro, the track for me though is Indeside One, War and Peace. Mm. Mm. It's so good. Uh, and again, Sunday's reissues of this, 15 bucks all day long used on Discogs, probably even a little cheaper, and it's well worth it. I am on the hunt for one that I know Sam has, which is the uh, More Ore, uh, which is uh, is it stuff that's done by other artists? Yes, that, covers. Yeah, covers. Um, there's some great ones on there, though. I think Mark Lonigan does one. Tom Waits has one on there. Uh, mm. It's yeah, I'm on the hunt for that one. And that's not an expensive one either. I think you know, 30 to 40 bucks probably on that one. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's my number one. My number one jealousy generator on your your list of things you have, Matt. That that I'm just. Ugh. <laughs> I don't I don't usually kiss and tell, but I will tell you how much I paid for that one. I it was an accident. <laughs> Sometimes it is when we kiss and tell. Hmm. <laughs> Happy. Hold on a second. Hold on. I gotta. I gotta. <laughs> but I was. Uh, I woke up in the middle of the night. One of my kids had gotten up, and I woke up in the middle of the night, gave him a glass of water, went back to sleep, and apparently I bought it on eBay. <laughs> I didn't even remember doing it. Uh, but it was such a good deal. I have done that before. I have a, a bad track record of buying things in my sleep on eBay. It has happened a few times, but I got it for one twenty-five. Oh, nice. that's still a good, really right. good price on that. I yeah, just grabbed it, and I the next morning I was, I was like, man, I dreamed I bought that record last night, and I checked my eBay, and sure enough, I did. So and Matt I, bought a record while his wife was in labor, and he was pooping. Yeah, and he didn't remember it. It was post labor. She'd had the baby. Oh, okay. But it was like, I mean, it was like an hour and a half after. I'm remembering the story. Was it? Um, hold on, hold on. Was it? Um, uh, what's that album called? I know it. I, I remember it. It's the. Um, it's not like super rare. I mean, I, I paid like twenty five bucks for like a forty five dollar record. It's uh, uh, Mr. Flood's party, right? No. Uh, no. Okay, Farewell, no. all the Baron. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. But yeah. Mr. Flood's party is great too. Great yeah. record. All right. Sometimes reissues, you've had the CD forever, and you're like, man, I just need a vinyl copy of that. And you're like, I just for whatever reason can't come across a good vinyl copy of this great record. So you buy the mono reissue, and then the next day you're in a store. And you see an original stereo pressing for nine dollars, and you're like, I gotta have them both because I want the mono mix and the stereo mix. And then it just takes you a little while before you can find an original mono at uh, Human Head Records in New York City. You know, yeah. oh man, it was I had a heck of a haul. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's about getting a different mix of something that you already have somewhere, and reissue is just going to be the way to do that. Sometimes it's about like, oh, I've loved that CD forever, but I really want a good pressing of it. These are the only two MoFi's that I have, and I'm a, I, I'm a sucker for early Weezer. I love it. They were one of my favorite bands in high school, and so both of their MoFi releases I had to get. That's So the uh, Pet Sounds reminds me of something. First of all, I got my Mint first mono at goodwill for one dollar nice. but anyways um the uh, uh one of the pressings i was on the lookout for was the analog productions pressing of that it sounds so good it's unbelievable um i think it sounds better than the original i hate to say it but it's it's, it's it sounds phenomenal so analog productions put us on some really great stuff i'm not a big time audiophile but I, I, I might actually be i don't know but you know it, it is about the different mixes and stuff like that i think um you know, the Stooges uh, Raw Power has a double LP reissue of the David Bowie mix and the Iggy Pop mix. And that's worth and having. They're the totally 90s mix is just legit better. It just is. Like, I've got an original Raw Power, and I love that I have it. But, yeah, it's the mix is weak. All right, last one I'll show. July. You got to have it. Oh, yeah. You can get these reissues for super cheap. It's an amazing record. Yeah. Uh, what are they, 300 bucks? You know, it's fine. Oh, I've seen them for more than that. Maybe, maybe 400. I don't know. Ooh, I, I'm talking substantially more than that. Really? I, I, oh, I could, no, that's too totally much. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, like I don't know. I, I almost bought one a while ago, but it was a little bit out of my price range. 
and had a little bit too much damage. Let's see. Let's see what they go for. Um, we want to see the first U.S. press. 300 bucks is on. It's, that's the Discog, so it's probably a good chance that it's wrong. But anyways, <laughs> the yeah, so that's one that I would, it, you know, it's, it's another one, like you said, uh, Matt, that, you know, they're out there. They're findable, but it's just a matter of finding them. So. I was talking UK. Just, just oh, oh, hey. wow. that's, that's, excuse me. <laughs> I I just know that there's one that pops up in my like daily email for them where some dude wants like like twelve forty five for it. Eighteen hundred. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So yeah, depending on what what pressing you want. Um, and then like that that opens up a whole another can of worms. Like if you want the UK pressing or the German pressing, or I usually try to stick with. Uh, well, when it comes to psych, the cheapest original press I can get usually. But um, if I can, I like to get the pressings from wherever the band's from. So if they're UK band, UK presses and US and so so on and such forth. We uh, decided to choose only five records each, so as to cut down on time. <laughs> we really stuck to that. Well, Actually, so, we did okay. I think we did okay this time. Yeah. We we have this is way longer than our last video, but it's fine. No, it's not. It's like five minutes longer. But people have nothing else better to do. That's right. You are hostage to our whims, audience. <laughs> Anyways, I have records just around me everywhere. <laughs> Isn't that the dream? Matt, I need to, I need you to get the pants and the shoes that match them. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, one more thing. Uh, another great book to go from Mojo Collection. You got to have a copy of the Mojo Collection book. It's solid. I remember when I was in high school, and I didn't talk about anything other than music and movies. And I was at Barnes and Noble with my dad one day. He's probably buying a gift card for my mom. And I'm sitting in like the big old armchairs they used to have, and I'm reading this book. And my dad, who's just like sick and tired of me talking about music and movies, comes up to me. He's like, "Oh my gosh, you're reading. What are you reading?" And I was like. Mojo Collection, greatest albums ever recorded. And he's just like, you're sick. <laughs> he's come around, though. He's come around. He's a, He appreciates it now Now that it's paying the bills, being the, being the psych professor and all. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why they pay the big bucks is because, yeah, you know, yeah. you're a professor. Okay, well, we're going to shut this recording yeah. off. Thank you guys for watching, and we can still talk. Uh, but see you guys later. Have a good one. Take care.